Good morning. My name is uh, Edward Casalis, and I will be your lector for this morning's Mass. Our celebrant will be Father Dave, and assisted by Deacon Greg. <clears throat> the great dinner auction is this Saturday. Don't miss out on this fantastic evening of food, auctions, and celebrations of our parish. You can visit stgregs.org to get tickets, and we all look forward to seeing you there. St. Vincent de Paul will be collecting donations this weekend for their food pantry. You can drop off your donations in front of the church prior to and after each Mass. Cash and check donations will also be accepted. Join us today for the Harmonia Chamber Singers Voices of Autumn concert. The performance begins at three o'clock here at St. Gregory's. Admission is $25 for adults, $10 for students, and it's free for children 12 and under. It is still possible to uh, purchase pre-sale tickets that they're available on Eventbrite uh, website. Please read the bulletin for more information on first reconciliation and communion, inf uh, communion registration, the handbell choir rehearsals, and there's much more. The readings for this liturgy are located at 1284 in the Gather Book. At this time, I ask you to stand and welcome those around you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. 
as we begin to see less and less daylight, we rely on Christ to be our light. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent by the Father to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exult at the head of the nations, proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the earth. With the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child, they shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel 
Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. said among the nations, what great deeds the Lord worked for them, what great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed, we were glad. The Lord has done great things for us. our exiles, O Lord, as streams in the Negev, those who are sowing in tears will sing when they reap. The Lord has done great things for us. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who, get, who glorified himself 
in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, you are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Get up. Jesus is calling you. With a phrase like that in the gospel, what kind of vocation director would I be if I didn't preach a little bit on the call of Jesus? But I'm talking to everyone because Vatican II said that there is a universal call to holiness. Before that, there was a sense that the priests and the nuns do all the work and we just show up. And Vatican II said, oh no, it shook everybody by the shoulders. We're all called to move this ball forward, to be a part of the mission of building up the kingdom of God, to work on our personal holiness as well. God is calling everyone to this altar where those changes take place. Those watching on the live stream at home, God wants you here receiving his body and blood. Those who just kind of drifted away during COVID and have never come back, Come on back. God is called. Jesus is calling you. Get up. Jesus is calling you. He wants to change your life. And some, Jesus is calling to give their life for the church. And those are the vocations of, for the guys, the priesthood and the diaconate, for the ladies, the religious life, the consecrated virginity. Consecrated virginity, what's that? These ladies are kind of the secret agents of the church. There was one at mass last night, and I'll bet nobody knows who it is. It's a very mysterious vocation, wonderful call that God gives to some women. I think God is still calling plenty of people, but a lot of us aren't hearing that voice. You know, our lives are too loud, too busy. I think some people are hearing the voice, but not responding to the call. 
And I remember that from my own life when I started to get a sense of what God was really asking me to do. And it's, boy, I don't know, can I really, me? I mean, and it's an awful lot to give up. And finally, at one point in my prayer, Jesus said, kid, stop thinking about what you're going to lose and think about what I want to give you. That was a game-changing moment in my discernment. And he has completely delivered on that promise. I, far more fulfillment now than I ever had in my life before entering the seminary. Imagine if Bartimaeus in the gospel today just didn't heed the call when Jesus called him. He'd still be blind. It's worth answering whatever Jesus is calling you to do. Whatever you do, don't listen to the crowd around you, right? That fickle crowd that you get in the gospel today where uh, Bartimaeus hears that Jesus is coming and he thinks this is my only chance to possibly recover my sight and he starts screaming, hey, son of David, have mercy. And the people immediately, they jump right on top of him. Oh, shh, how quiet, you're embarrassing us. He's a busy man, he doesn't have time for you. But as soon as Jesus turns around and says, no, no, call him over. Oh, well, now they can't help him enough, right? Oh, stand right up. Let us help you. We'll make room for you. Gee, aren't you wonderful? The fickle crowd, right? These people would go on to invent the internet, where we say one thing one minute, and then as soon as fashions change, we say the complete opposite thing, flipping and flopping all of our lives. This is what our society has become. Don't listen to the crowd. I met my cousin for lunch. This was years ago, and uh, I had the day off. He was... Uh, working at a, he was designing parts for a factory. I went and, and met him and brought some takeout. We sat out, it was a beautiful June day. We're out having lunch outside and, and uh, it was break time in the factory and people came out and I noticed that one guy was wearing this, this really tight black ski cap and I said, boy, it's, it's, it's 85 degrees out here. What's he doing with that hat? My cousin said, oh, uh, there's a new hip hop artist who's out and he wears a hat like that and a lot of people think it's cool to wear a hat. And I said, now, wait a minute. I used to wear a hat like this because I walked to high school in the winter and I got picked on for it. Now all of a sudden, because some hip hop artist thinks it's cool, everybody's doing it in the summer? The fickle crowd, right? One thing is cool one minute and then it changes. Don't listen to the crowd. They know not what they speak. And don't even get me started on artificial intelligence. There is nothing going on there that's thinking at all. A lot of people are afraid of this. And I, I had another cousin who was a meteorology student at SUNY Oswego, really big me meteorology program there. And they were starting to roll this out. This will help us to predict the weather better. How's that been working out? <laughs> And he said, how does this work? He knew I was in computers before I entered the seminary. So he asked, how does this artificial intelligence work? And I said, don't even use that term, intelligence. This is nothing, they used to call it machine learning, and that was a more accurate term. It's nothing but pattern recognition. You cram enough data into a big enough server and you get processors that can crank through it fast enough. And any time you ask it a question, it just runs through all those chains of information and tries to predict, now they did this last time, probably this is what's gonna happen. It's just completely pattern matching. There were two people awarded a Nobel Prize recently for their groundbreaking work early on in the artificial intelligence industry. There were actually three guys who started out, only two got the prize, and why is that? Because the third guy left, because he, he didn't like the way this was going. He said, we're fooling people. This is, we're calling this thing intelligent. It's not intelligent at all. He says, all it's doing is, is, is predicting the future based on past patterns. He said, artificial intelligence is no smarter than your cat. It's a direct quote from the paper when they interviewed him. This is not going to take over and destroy the world. It can never replace you, friends, and that's an important thing to keep in mind, that you are unique and irreplaceable. Why am I bringing all this up? Because the Pope wrote about it. He has a brand new document out, a papal encyclical. This is the highest level of document a Pope can write. And he wrote it about the sacred heart of Jesus, one of those wonderful old devotions that we could really do well to recover. It was just going to be an apostolic exhortation, which is a document popes write to encourage people to go back and look at this treasure of the church that we're forgetting. As he's writing it, he says, wait a minute, I've got something new to say about this topic. And it became an encyclical, which has teaching weight behind it. I haven't got to the new teaching yet. It just came out Thursday. I mean, it's brand new. But 
It's beautiful stuff in the introduction. He starts talking about what is the heart anyway. If we say Jesus has a sacred heart, what even does that mean? It's obviously we're not talking about the organ that's beating and pumping our blood. There's something more to it. And he talks about philosophy, but then he says the one who really shows us is our blessed mother, who is told in the gospel, we are told twice that she pondered all these things in her heart. Right? The, the Christmas story has that. And he says what Mary kept in her heart was not only her memory of all she had seen and heard, but also those aspects of it that she did not yet understand. Mm, that's what life is like, right? And these remain present and alive in her memory, waiting to be put together in her heart. I like that. And then he says, in this age of artificial intelligence, we cannot forget that poetry and love are necessary to save our humanity. No algorithm will ever be able to capture the nostalgia that you feel, whatever your age, wherever you live. When you recall how you first used a fork to seal the edges of the pies that you helped your mother and your grandmother make at home. Oh, who hasn't done that, right? Memories of in the kitchen as a little kid with grandma, right? These things are a precious part of everyone's life. A joke we told, a picture we sketched in the light of the window, the first game of soccer we played with a rag ball, the, the, the flower petals we pressed in a book. Ordinary things in themselves, but extraordinary for us that can never be captured by an algorithm. The joke, the fork, the pie, the window, the ball, the flowers, all of these live on as precious memories deep in our heart where everything finds its unity, this profound core of the entire person. That's what we're talking about when we say the sacred heart of Jesus Christ. And that heart is calling you. And what's it calling you to? This is the important thing to discover. He goes on to talk about St. John Henry Newman, uh, the great English-British convert and cardinal whose uh, slogan as a cardinal was cor ad cor loquitur. What does that mean? Heart speaks to heart. You know, you feel that when you're talking to a friend. You know, our hearts are speaking to each other. God is speaking to you in that same way. Heart speaks to heart, the sacred heart of Jesus. And it's calling you. First reading from Jeremiah was chapter 31. This is a, a huge chapter in the Old Testament because it mentions the word new covenant. That's New Testament language. And it takes place in the prophets. Jeremiah 31, if you've got to read on beyond what we, what we uh, read here today, uh, and you'll hear him saying, I will give them a new covenant and I will write their law, not on stone, but on their heart. God's law is now written on our heart. And that's what we're being called to express with our heart, to realize that it's a part of that inward core of who we are as human beings, right? If you're living in conjunction with the sacred heart of Jesus, you could never imagine offending him, right? It's ever, being here and, and pleasing him and worshiping him is, is just a part of your core. There's a lot of images of the sacred heart in our tradition. In the last two, three hundred years, this devotion has been around. But there's one I'll bet that you haven't seen. It's going to appear on the screens above me here in just a minute. And it's not a famous artwork. It's, it's not quality art. But this is powerful because they found it on the wall of a prison cell in the Auschwitz concentration camp. That there was a man named Stefan Zizinski who was a prisoner in there and surrounded by all that cruelty and depravity, he said, I gotta keep my heart focused on what is really going to save me. And he took his own fingernail and he carved that in the wall of his prison cell and triumphed over all of the death and violence around him. Friends, this is what Jesus Christ is calling us to. In times of anxiety, times of trouble and cruelty, he's calling you to victory. Please stand as we proclaim our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation.
came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. To God who is speaking to us, but also listening to us, we offer our prayers and the needs of our world. For the church, that we may passionately <clears throat> and continuously call out to Christ for our needs and courageously follow Jesus on the way of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater reverence for human life, particularly for the elderly or those dealing with long-term infirmities, that we may affirm their dignity and support them with love and encouragement. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a listening and sensitive heart, that we may always listen to and support those who cry out in pain or need our help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are recovering from natural disasters, that God will strengthen them, open doors to the resources that they need, and give them hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For safe and peaceful elections, that God grants all voters the wisdom to make informed choices about candidates and ballot measures, helps them overcome obstacles in reaching polling places, and encourages acceptance of the election results. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our parish family, whom we pray for in a special way at this Mass, and for our own prayers and intentions, which we offer now in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, <clears throat> especially those who have passed on this week from our parish and faith community, that they may find healing and mercy as they approach the throne of grace. Patricia Bishop. Thomas Bova. Michael Sheehan. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Be with us, Almighty God, in all of our trials. We ask all things depending on your mercy, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Our ushers will now take up the collection. Our second collection today is for hurricane recovery response. And our gift bearers will be John and Pat Meyer.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord is Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other that same sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Always lots of things happening here. We're really focused on next Saturday's dinner auction, you know, the great gala that we have every year. Uh, fundraisers are struggling at this time in our, uh, you know, economy and in our church's moment, the, the troubles that we're in. I had a fundraiser for the vocation office a few weeks ago that also struggled. We made it, you know, we did all right. But uh, I, uh, I think about, uh, you all remember Monsignor Rupert Wright, you know, who could forget Monsignor Wright. He used to always say, people think we're rich here. But we're not St. Gregory the Rich, we're St. Gregory the Many. Right? There's a lot of truth to that. And this is one of those events where we call many people to make a, a sacrificial gift, come and have a great night out, but support all the ministry that happens here. Um, tickets are available for the gala still, and, and there are people in the back who will, uh, uh, at the foyer, who, who can uh, uh, help you with that if, if you want to join us. Uh, there's, there's a, a $10,000 cash raffle that'll be, uh, the ticket will be drawn. You don't need to be there to win, but ticket will be drawn at the gala. Tickets for that are $20 each. And you know, it's, uh, it's not about money, it's about ministry. And uh, we're, we're blessed with a large staff that can organize a lot of ministry and, and volunteers, uh, but th that takes a lot of effort to support that. Um, talking about answering the call of Jesus, um, you'll be meeting the RCIA candidates for this coming year as we, we get going with that program. It started about a month ago. Um, 10, 12 people growing. We seem to be adding numbers. A lot of them are unbaptized adults who are coming to the waters of baptism. And Father Leon will be pouring gallons of water over their head at the Easter Vigil. It's just going to be glorious, you know. This is how we grow. I, the stats finally were released this week. Um, the church every, always releases stats on how many people entered the church worldwide 13 million new catholics in 2024 so don't let anybody tell you that we are shrinking right yeah hallelujah the lord be with you and with your spirit may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen this mass is now ended let us go forth in peace and enjoy to serve the lord and one another thanks, thanks be to god, to god. Thank you.
Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>